first of all, it sounds like this has been really on your heart for a long time. And if it is, has been a barrier with this dear friend of yours, it might be a good conversation to lovingly have. I guarantee it will probably decrease any barrier that's there and bring you closer. And very, very likely it's going to be this kind of juxtaposed um, situation where you both realize that you have very similar processes within your body self and at the same time a blind spot with how that might have been landing on each other. Okay, because I, I really, there's been so many people that just like complain about their body weight, complain about their body weight, and there's all these people around them in all different sizes of bodies, and they're completely clueless to how it lands on other people, because it really is such a personal thing about the self-judgment mm -hmm. of themselves, and they're not thinking about it with anybody else. But that would be a good conversation to be able to realize. And then I think that the, the shared experience of this profound struggle and shame within yourself, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying justified shame, but shame experience, mm -hmm. I think um, would really bring you together. And then you guys could probably support yourself even more, um, you know, as you go, as you go forward. I think that is a beautiful representation of doing the deeper work in this friendship. You know, yeah. stepping into vulnerability, right. sharing your feelings, your questions, um, inviting your friend if they're open to sharing their feelings and their questions, having a really rich and honest dialogue about, you know, this issue that may be kind of the proverbial pink elephant that no one's talking about, but right. maybe both of you are feeling just within yourselves and your own experience. So um, if that's something that you do decide to do and want to process with the community at all, we'd love to hear how that goes. Yeah, 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 really important. There seemed like there was one other thing that I was gonna say about body size and and the struggle. Oh, I know, so, so there's a couple of pieces of this too, and so hear me out with all of these. Yeah. So typically people who develop eating disorders are very, very, very kind, people so Incredibly. you're very judgmental of yourself and most of the time you would never be judgmental of somebody else okay so as harsh as you can be on yourself and maybe somebody else hears that and experiences that and goes, oh my gosh they must be being very judgmental of me right it, it usually isn't the case right because it is just this unfortunate this this internalizing and this kind of dumping all of this other emotional kind of processes on your on your body self. So remember that 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 usually people with a disorder, um, eating disorder, even though they are being very harsh on themselves, they are probably not thinking about that with you at all. Okay. And then the one qualifier to that, which is going to seem like it doesn't um, really support what I just said, but they can exist kind of both in the same space, is oftentimes you can come from, let's say, a family of origin and or a culture, but especially a family of origin, sometimes both, that is very looks and weight oriented, right? So if there is this judgmentalness around that, that, that probably was the impetus for you to internalize it, it's because you absorbed it from you know, your family culture. I mean, that's just what we do. We learn our mm -hmm. value system from the system around us. So, so if there is kind of that where maybe there are some judgments of other people's bodies, which can be part of an eating disorder, know that it doesn't come from this person not being a loving person, but because what they've internalized, and most of the time they're doing it more to themselves than to others. Yeah, but, that's a good but, point. but sometimes, you know, I mean, I, I talk to people that really struggle. Like I, I'm really judgmental of myself and sometimes I'm judgmental of other people mm -hmm. because everyone in my family was judgmental about this. And I really want to get rid of that part of myself because it's not congruous with my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we do that work and, and we're able to kind of separate that out and then they can let that part go. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I think it's like learning about those biases early yeah. on and then having to do that work within yourself to break out of those biases and give yourself a new perspective appreciate it. those thoughts might creep up right those those old thoughts that you heard from elsewhere that came in and you always have permission 
to say to your brain, thank you, that's not a helpful thought, and mm. get on with things, you know. Right. Um, I actually, in a future recovery hack, we'll be talking about um, not all thoughts are helpful, yeah, guys. So, um, you know, your brain is designed to think 24-7, and so not every thought that pops in is going to be a helpful one. So you always have permission to say, I choose to really not participate in that thought and just kind of let it keep on going by. So if that's helpful at all. Great. Yep. Yep. Good. I think so. Okay. Hopefully that's helpful for the number.